This is the Elder Scrolls remake at native 4K, ultra graphical settings and hardware ray tracing on an RTX 4090. It's very, very demanding. We've dropped into the 30s, guys. But there's hope, because if we make some settings changes, we can get the game to look even better and get a lot more FPS. I'll put my adjusted settings on the right so you guys can see for yourselves and even look at the image quality differences for yourselves. And both sides, by the way, have ultra hardware ray tracing turned on as well. On this video, we'll take a look at the software versus hardware ray tracing. We'll look at the cost, differences in visual fidelity. We'll also take a quick look at DLSS, CNN and Transformer model because on the right, I'm actually using the DLSS Transformer model in performance mode and it looks great. The game can be quite scalable if you play around with the settings and there is one setting that's actually pretty demanding, even more than ray tracing. Let's start by taking a look at the graphical settings. Let's start with 4K Ultra Graphical Preset, Hardware Lumen and DLSS Quality. 47 FPS guys, even with DLSS quality. This game can be very demanding inside thick forests. That's why I went to this area. I always try to test the worst case scenarios and this is the worst one that I've found so far. But that is with the ultra graphical preset. Let's try to knock it down from ultra to high. We hit apply settings and we go from 47 all the way to 71 FPS guys. So just by dropping the preset from ultra to high, we gain a ton of performance. That's over 55% gain in FPS. And the game still looks great by the way. Can you guys spot any differences? We have the ultra preset on the left and the high preset on the right. If you can, leave a comment down below and let me know. There would have to be some sort of a difference for a 55% gain in performance right getting back to the high preset though 73 fps it's a no-brainer and it further strengthens the idea that maxing out graphical settings in ue5 games can be a waste of performance running at native resolution too but while we're at it let's take a look at the medium preset and we go from 73 fps to 90 fps so not as big of a jump not nearly as big of a jump and we take a massive hit to the visual fidelity if you look right we lost all the grass in front of us so yeah i wouldn't really recommend this unless you have a low powered device or you have to run it this way you could still enjoy the game of course but yeah i would personally stick to the high preset and if you were to drop to the low settings well look for yourselves guys i mean it doesn't matter what the fps is it doesn't look good we have a bunch of flickering too for whatever reason and we don't even gain that much more fps now if it's playing on a handheld or something this would be fine of course because you have to make compromises but anyway getting back to my settings as a refresher 4k ultra graphical preset with dlss quality is at 46 fps and all i did was drop shadow quality from ultra to high and that takes us from 46 fps all the way to 61 fps that is a 30 percent gain in performance shadow quality is the most demanding setting i left everything else on ultra though but if you'll remember if we dropped the whole preset to high we went all the way up to 73 so yeah it might even be smarter to just go with the high preset because the visual differences are very minimal if even there in the intro of this video i showed you how i was running the game versus native resolution with dlss performance transformer model now if you wanted to you can use dlss quality and you'll still be above 60 fps but in my opinion dlss performance with the transformer model looks practically the same so i'd rather take the extra performance Speaking of DLSS, this is DLSS Performance CNN model and it actually works pretty good to be fair. It looks really good. There's no ghosting issues or anything like that. It works quite well, but DLSS Transformer model definitely looks better. It's more crisp and it looks more stable overall. 
I'm using preset K and I set it with the Nvidia app. So it's very easy to do. And sometimes people make a pretty big deal out of the fact that it costs more performance. And it does, but it's very little. It's a couple FPS, although that can depend on the type of RTX GPU you have. If it's an older RTX GPU, it might cost a little bit more. But if you can, I would go with the transformer model, high graphical preset. I think that's a good place to start. And then I guess wait for Benchmarking's video with more detail about all the settings and what is the actual best optimized settings to use, but this is what I'm using. This remake uses Lumen Ray Tracing for its global illumination and reflections, both software and hardware, which is nice to see. More UE5 games need to offer both options with multiple tiers. I uploaded this image on my X Follow me, by the way, if you have an account, it's at TerraWarePC. But you can see the difference in performance cost from software low to hardware ultra ray tracing. Now, is this cost worth it? Well, let's examine it. We'll start by looking at the reflections. And if you didn't know, the game uses a screen space reflections layer on top of the ray trace reflections. And I'm not a very big fan of this and recommend turning it off if you're using hardware lumen in the high settings because whatever isn't in the camera view will disappear from the reflections, like looking down. And sometimes big weapons like this bow, for example, can look quite distracting because it's blocking the camera view and the reflections can't apply. The Sable in screen space reflections looks quite a bit better, as you can see. And we're obviously gonna be disabling it here while we look at the Lumen reflections and the differences between software and hardware. We'll start with software Lumen on low. And I'd say it looks pretty good. We get decent looking reflections. Our FPS is pretty good at 4K with DLSS quality. We're getting around 125 FPS. Now, if we go with software Lumen on high, to be honest with you, I don't really notice much of a difference. It does become just slightly more demanding, but nothing really worth pointing out. So if you're gonna use software Lumen, just go with high. Now. Swapping over to hardware lumen low is where things begin to change. Now, more distant objects like the mountains are added into the reflection. It also costs us a little bit more. We go from 125 FPS to 110. Jumping from hardware lumen low to medium, the objects being reflected have more detail, like the grass, for example. It now looks more like grass. It's green than dirt. And it costs us an additional 10 FPS. It's rather subtle though. And going from hardware lumen medium to high, the objects become even more detailed, especially the closer ones. Like the grass, again, looks much more detailed. And the performance cost is only like one or two FPS, so not very big. And going from hardware lumen high to ultra, it adds quite a bit more detail on the stuff that's being reflected. Especially the yellow flowers are definitely more apparent but it does still look rather a bit grainy though. I think ray reconstruction could work wonders here. And performance is still pretty much the same. So I would recommend if you use software, use high, and if you use hardware, use ultra. Now, there's another benefit to using ultra hardware ray tracing. Dynamic objects like NPCs, for example, and animals are part of the ray trace reflections, and it actually looks pretty good. And if you swap to software lumen, NPCs are not a part of the reflections. So that is the reflections. There is definitely a visual upgrade, just like there was in Silent Hill 2. But is that worth the cost? Well, I guess that depends on the hardware you have. But what about the lighting? Now, lighting, especially in the forest, can be quite noticeable. It's where it's the most noticeable, I'd say. We'll start with software lumen low. Well, you know the drill. If we swap to software lumen high, it more or less looks the same. It's not until you turn on hardware lumen low that the shadows look noticeably better. Jumping up to hardware lumen medium, high, or even ultra, there is a much of a noticeable difference, but between software and hardware, there is a noticeable difference. So that's the outdoors. I would say this is the most noticeable that you can tell that it's enabled. 
Now, indoor, there can be differences as well. I'm not gonna bother by cycling through all the different levels. We'll just focus on software lumen high and hardware lumen ultra. And if we swap between the two guys, the difference are very minimal. You can tell that the indirect lighting is a little bit better with the hardware lumen. You can see that yellowish sun glow be reflected a bit better, but it's very subtle. So yeah, guys, quite a bit to go through, but my settings, as I showed in the beginning, is 4K, everything on ultra except for shadow quality is on high with DLSS transformer performance model, hardware lumen on ultra, and even in the thickness of the forest, you get really good performance. Now guys, I doubt many people are gonna make it this far into the video, but if you did, I have a confession to make. Well, I never really got into Oblivion that much, believe it or not. I love my RPGs, but somehow Oblivion missed me. I remember when it came out, it was actually right around when I picked up an Xbox 360, which was a couple months after it had released. And a guy I used to work with got Oblivion. He was extremely happy to play it. And I watched him play for a little bit and it looked really cool. So I picked up Elder Scrolls Oblivion for the Xbox 360. I still have my copy somewhere and I began playing it and I made it. I remember going into the Imperial City and it felt a bit overwhelming and um, I never really stuck to it even though I do remember the graphics at the time looking absolutely Die. stunning and my friend absolutely loved it he was telling me how he made this like uh, mage knight with glass armor and I was like wow that sounds really cool I'll have to get back and finish it someday and thankfully well <laughs> decades later we get this remaster which it does have flaws it does have some performance issues but it's not too, too bad. And hopefully they can update it and minimize the stutters because I am using pretty high-end hardware here. A Ryzen 9800 X3D and an RTX 4090. And yes, the game is demanding, but as you can see with the settings that I went with and as good as DLSS has gotten lately, it's fine. I'm getting plenty of FPS and it looks absolutely gorgeous on my 4K OLED display. I've been sprinting for so long trying to lose this NPC because she's pretty tough and she won't give up. I don't think you can outrun NPCs in this game, guys. I guess we have no choice but to kill her. But to get back to my previous confession for just a second, I did actually play Skyrim on the Xbox 360, believe it or not, and I beat it. And I also played it again and beat it on PC a few years ago. Finally! Oh my god, I'm almost dead. And she's down. But I was in for a surprise, guys, because I talked to her and she got up. Is this a bug? I thought if you kill an NPC in uh, Elder Scrolls games that they can die forever. I don't know. Maybe this was an NPC that I wasn't supposed to attack or something. But anyway, guys, as you can see here, we're getting really good performance. And this is without frame generation, by the way. Let's go ahead and turn on frame generation and we'll wrap up the video and I'll share my thoughts. Let's go ahead and throw DLSS frame generation. And we were already getting 90 to 100 FPS in this forest area, which is really good. And with DLSS frame generation, well, that takes us all the way up to 160-ish. Now, this, it looks extremely fluid. It looks extremely good on my 4K OLED display. Now, don't mind the frame time and the 1% lows because MS Afterburner cannot properly read the new DLSS frame generation uh, methodology because it's a little bit different. So the 1% lows are not accurate, but the game looks extremely fluid. Uh, on my 240 hertz OLED display. So let me just get rid of that 1% lows. And we'll enter these mines real quick. FPS is probably gonna shoot up. But what I always try to say in my videos about frame generation, is it worth turning it on? Because we had 100 FPS previously, so we turn on frame generation, and now we go all the way up to 165 FPS. But only half of those FPS are real frames. 
the other half are generated. So we actually got lost in latency a little bit. We had a game that felt like 100 FPS, which is extremely fluid. I have no problem with 100 FPS, uh, believe it or not. Now it's 165, but half of those frames are fake and half are real. So yeah, that's my dilemma. I would probably play the game without frame generation, if I'm being honest. Sometimes frame generation can smooth over some like minor hitches, but not really like stutters. Uh, so yeah, that's my settings with frame generation. The game is extremely playable. So then to wrap this video up that took me a few days to put together because of work and I wanted to show you guys the differences in Lumen especially because the cost in performance can be quite noticeable. And when I posted that image on X with the reflections, I like posting images like that because I get a reaction to what people say. And a lot of people said that it looked exactly the same to them, uh, that they take the more FPS. And I understand completely where they're coming from. Now, I wanted to dive a bit deeper so to show you guys what the differences are. And there could be even more differences, but those are the ones that I found with the reflections. Yeah, there are differences. With Hardware Lumen, you get re reflections on NPCs and animals, which is pretty cool. Now, the other benefit of hardware lumen in my opinion at least is that i can just disable the screen space reflections which can be quite distracting because whatever's not in the camera view is not going to be reflected software lumen looks pretty good but hardware lumen looks better so personally i prefer hardware lumen on ultra because my hardware is supported but if yours can't you can use software lumen it looks really good and eventually you do end up getting used to it now as far as Upscaling, well, I've yet to take a look at FSR 4, but apparently it's supposed to be supported in this game with the latest Radeon optional driver update. So I might take a look at that uh, sometime very soon and check it out because FSR 3 actually did not look that bad in this game. DLSS did look better and DLSS Transformer looks even better. But DLSS Transformer can sometimes have a little bit of a ghosting issue that I noticed with some uh, flying particles where this DLSS CNN model did not really have those issues. So yeah, guys, I don't know. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I've seen some of the reactions around this remake. Overall, people love it. They think it looks great. But the biggest issue I've seen people complain about is the performance. And I can understand that because I tested it on some very high-end hardware and... I had some performance issues. Although it wasn't too, too bad, it can be noticeable. So I hope that can be fixed because this is an amazing game that I'm looking forward to finally completing. And I can only imagine that there's a lot of new people that are checking it out for the first time. And I've also played iconic games for the very first time because there were older games that got remade and I would never have played them and I ended up playing them. So it's cool. It's definitely a good thing to see. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think about all this. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to enjoy the sunset. It's beautiful. <laughs> Bye guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.